Ma questa è una husband one day died. My 
finding the normal custom of following the cortege with hair unbound and beating her breast in public quite inadequate to express her grief. The lady insisted on following the corpse into the tomb and there set herself to guard the body, weeping and wailing night and day. Although in her extremes of grief, she was clearly courting death from starvation, her parents were utterly unable to persuade her to leave. In short, all efforts were sent on into mourning for this extraordinary woman. All the more since the lady was now passing her fifth consecutive day without one tasting. Beside the failing woman sat her devoted maid, sharing her mistress' grief and relighting the lamp whenever it flickered out. The whole city could speak in fact of nothing else. Here at last, the passers of Ida Greed was the one to example of province gave orders that several thieves should be crucified in a spot close by the vault where the lady was mourning her dead husband's corpse. So, on the following night, the soldier who had been assigned to keep watch on the crosses so that nobody could remove the thieves' bodies for burial suddenly noticed a light blazing among the tombs and heard the sounds of groaning and prompted to know who or what was making those sounds, he descended into the vault. But at the sight of a striking and beautiful woman, he stopped short in terror, thinking he must be seeing some ghostly apparition out of hell. Then, observing the corpse and seeing the tears on the lady's face, and the scratches her fingernails had gashed in her cheeks. He realized what it was. Promptly fetching his little supper back down to the tomb, he implored the lady not to persist in her sorrow for men alike had the same and the same, the same resting place awaits us all. His consolations being unwelcome only exasperated the widow more. More violently than ever, she beat her breast and, tearing out her hair by the roots, scattered it over the dead man's body. Undismayed, the soldier repeated his arguments and pressed her to take some food until the little maid, quite overcome by the smell of the wine, succumbed and stretched out her hand. To her tempter. Then, restored by the food and wine, she began herself to assail her mistress' obstinate refusal. Oh, 
together the first, the second, and the third night, too. One night, however, the parents of one of the crucified thieves, noticing that the watch was being badly kept, took advantage of our hero's absence to remove their son's body and bury it. The next morning, of course, the soldier was horror-struck to discover one of the bodies missing from its cross and ran to tell his mistress of the horrible punishment which awaited him for neglecting his duty. In the circumstances, he told her, he would not wait to be tried and sentenced, but would punish himself then and there with his own sword. All he asked of her was that she make room for another corpse and allow the same gloomy tomb to enclose husband and lover together. However, was no less tender than pure. She cried. God forbid that I should have to see at more than the same time the dead bodies of the only two men I ever have loved. No better far, I say, to hang the dead and kill the living. With these words she gave orders that her husband's body should be taken from its bier and struck upon the empty corpse.
make yourselves comfortable. Once I used to be like you, but I rose to the top by my ability. Guts are what make the man, the rest is garbage. I buy well, I sell well. Others have different notions, but like I was saying, friends, it's through my business sense that I shut up. Why? When I came here from Asia, I stood no taller than that candlestick there. For 14 years, I was my master's pet. But what's the shame in doing what you're told to do? Not all the same, if you know what I mean. I managed to do my mistress a favor or two. The mum's the word. I'm none of your ordinary blowhards. Well, then heaven gave me a push, and I became master in the house. I was my master's brains. I was my master's brain, so he made me heir to everything he had. And I came out of it with a senator's fortune. But we never have enough. And I wanted to try my hand at business. To cut it short, I had five ships built. Then I stocked them with wine, worth its weight in gold at the time, and shipped them off to Rome. I might as well have told them to go sink themselves, since that's what they did. Yep, all five of them wrecked. No kidding. In one day, old Neptune swallowed down a cool million. Was I licked? Hell no! That loss just whetted my appetite. As though nothing had happened at all, I built some more ships. Bigger and better and a damn sight luckier. No one could say I didn't have guts. But big ships make a man feel big himself. I shipped a cargo of wine, bacon, beans, perfume, and slaves. That was the yeast of my wealth. Besides, when the gods want something done, it gets done in a jiffy. On that one voyage alone, I cleared about 500,000. Right away, I bought up all my old master's property. I built a house. I went into slave trading and cattle buying. Everything I touched just grew and grew like honeycomb. More and more. 775,000. One million. More and more again. Seven millions, millioni, 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 millioni. Thirty million, twenty million, hundred million, no more, no more. Colossal, three million, ten million, quarter million, ten million, ten million, ten million, ten million.
16 Millionen, 20 Millionen, 100 Millionen, noch mehr, immer mehr, kolossal, Fria Miliacentis, Quadrigente Miliacentis, Mungente Miliacentis. Oh, my God. 
attacks of his freedom at his bed and bed. contents of my will, so my whole household will love me as much when I'm still alive as after I am dead. Here, my private tuba mirum. Will you make me my tomb exactly as I order it? First, of course, I want a statue of myself. I want a statue of myself, but of my God at my feet, and give me garlands of flowers, jars of perfume, and with the house where he lives his life, but give no thought to the home he'll have forever. But above all, I want you to carve this notice. This monument does not pass into the possession of my heirs. That my grave is protected from damage after my death. I'll appoint one of my ex slaves to act as custodian to chase away the people who might come and crack. Or it's a fact, and you're my witness. The 
that I gave a free meal to the whole town and a cash handout to everyone. Also, make me a dining room, a freeze make, however you like, and show the whole town celebrating at my expense. On my right, I want a Voted in absentia, an official of the imperial cult. He could have been registered in any category of the civil service at Rome, but chose otherwise. Pious and courageous, a loyal friend. He died a millionaire, though he started life with nothing. Let it be said to his eternal credit that he never listened to philosophers. <laughs> 